Good morning and happy Sabbath. Thank you for joining us again today. I don't know about you, but right around this time of year, a song gets stuck in my head. I try to resist the tune. I try not to heed a siren's call. Because guys, there are protocols to follow. There are rules to obey. It's not time yet. We can't rush this. If you have too much of it, it will lose its special nature. But it's hard. Especially in seasons like this, times like this, years like this. Because I've grown a little leaner, grown a little colder, grown a little sadder, grown a little older, and I need a little angel sitting on my shoulder. I don't know about you, but I need a little Christmas now. Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for all the gifts you have given us, and most especially for the gift of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the incarnation. Thank you for understanding what it is like to be human. Thank you for this gift of salvation that you've given to all of us. And thank you for this time of year where we can remember all of that. Speak, Lord. We're listening. Amen. Amen. The song I quoted is We Need a Little Christmas, and it originally comes from the musical Auntie May. Um, and it's one that I've, uh, it's been one of my favorites actually my entire life. Um, but what's interesting is if you don't know about the story of Auntie Mame, um, at that, why she sings that particular song is because she finds out that she's lost her fortune uh, in the stock market crash of 1929. And so she decides uh, that she and her nephew and her servants all need a little Christmas. And it's funny because the nephew even points out it's just the week after Thanksgiving. Right? And she's already wanting to decorate for Christmas, and, and, and the nephew is aghast that she wants to start Christmas so early. Um, and yes, they are joking on commercial creep, and yes, commercial creep is totally a thing, and they're starting Christmas in the stores perhaps way too early, um, trying to monetize on the season. But honestly, I think something else is going on when we desire uh, to start Christmas, when we need a little Christmas in our lives. For those of us who love um, this time of year, this season, perhaps a question we should ask this morning is why are people so eager for the holidays to come? And I was looking into it, and it's really interesting that many of the holidays that come around this time of year, so holidays like Diwali, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, all have light motifs and light as a central symbol. Now, perhaps because light uh, in many ways has become synonymous with certain ideas like goodness or safety. Uh, most importantly, hope. Hope that no matter how bad things are, it will get better. That no matter how dark the night is, no matter how dark the dark is, the dawn will always break and that light will always overcome the darkness. And perhaps in some ways that really has come to symbolize this idea of human hope that is so important uh, in existence, in, in our realities, that we all need hope. The people of Israel also needed hope. You see, um, as we look at them in the chapter in the book of Isaiah and through the uh, major prophets, we see um, a people that are on the brink of and in the middle of and on the other side of exile. And we see a group that has constantly seen uh, warshed, war, warfare and bloodshed and strife. And we see uh, people that have been constantly conquered throughout their existence. Now, part of the problem is because Israel lies on a major trade route. Um, and that many of the world's empires uh, throughout history have needed that trade route to secure their empires. And so as almost as a, an unfortunate side effect, Israel gets conquered time and time again. And so there's, there's this idea that um, Messiah is an incredibly important concept uh, that comes along with that. This promise um, that Israel will not be perpetually, continuously... Uh, captured under the rule of somebody else and usually mistreated, not usually, always mistreated uh, in those arrangements. Israel seeks deliverance. Israel seeks independence. Israel seeks um, freedom. And it hopes for that in the promise 
that God gives for Messiah. And so if you turn with me to Isaiah chapter 9, uh, we actually see um, one of these promises that are given for Messiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. And if you see here, that light motif is, is going to be factoring in as well. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, so he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish it and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Ultimately, I believe that people, humanity, wants to live in peace. That by and large, the majority of human beings just want to live their lives, just want to have enough, just want to be able to love and be loved, and honestly just left alone. And I think that what we see here in the promises of the Messiah is the answer to that deep, inborn desire for human that with the coming of Messiah, this idea of reconciliation, this idea of recovery, this idea of peace and prosperity, um, this sense of eternity even, this sense that even though things are bad right now, when Messiah comes, those problems will begin to go away. That's why I think that during this time, it's incredibly important to have Advent alongside Christmas and to remember that no matter how you choose to celebrate this season, this time, is to remember that we, especially as Christians and as Adventist Christians, there is incredible sacred significance for us in this time. It's not just the trees and it's not just the presents and it's not just the decorations and the music and the lights. and even though all of those things are, are, are great, and I love them, um, we remember that in Bethlehem, Jesus was born. And Jesus was born a human being who lived like one of us, who learned like one of us, who loved and cried and got angry and did all the things that we do. Um, but also was Emmanuel was God with us. Like that song said, O come, O come, Emmanuel. Why? Because we need God. And I believe that all human beings share that innate need for that thing that's bigger than themselves. As Pascal calls it, the God-shaped hole inside each and every one of us. So perhaps that's why this season becomes so important for so many of us, is because it helps fulfill that longing that we all have and that need that we all have. That need for hope, that need for love, that need for safety and inclusion, that need to be home and, uh, and safe. That's why I, I think about this year that we've had. A year that none of us could have predicted, a year that's been so tumultuous and so uncertain, a year that's been so uh, turbulent in every possible way, especially here in the United States, our year has been uh, incredibly turbulent for a number of reasons. The world has been turbulent for a number of reasons. And you know, perhaps we just need an extra helping of hope. And perhaps we just need an extra helping of that feeling that only the holidays can bring. Uh, a woman was having a conversation with her therapist and was talking about how overwhelmed she was with everything going on and how it felt like she couldn't get anything done because of how overwhelmed she was. So the therapist goes, all right, give me an example of that. 
And she was like, for example, the dishes. Like, I just go to the dishes and I see the sink full of dishes and I don't want to, have, it's just so much, it's so overwhelming to, to rinse the dishes, wash them, to get their dishes ready and then put them in the dishwasher. And the therapist looks at her and goes, let the dishwasher run twice. And she looks at him and, what? Let the dishwasher run twice. If you're going to uh, be overwhelmed, if that's going to be overwhelming, if, if doing that, doing the task that particular way, who says you have to do it that way? Who says you have to rinse all the dishes before you put them in the dishwasher? Just let it run twice. And I think that there's something incredibly beautiful and incredibly profound there. Is it possible that we have let many arbitrary rules dominate our lives? Who says that Christmas music can't start before a certain date? Who says that, you know, you can't put up a Christmas tree the day after Thanksgiving? What, what commandment is that found in? Because I don't think it is. I think that those are just arbitrary social constructs that we have created for ourselves. Um, for whatever reason, right? And normally it's fine. Normally I'm willing to abide by it. Normally I'm willing to wait until December 1st to put on the Christmas music and wear the Christmas sweaters and do all the things. But you know what? This year that we've had, this, this season that we've been in, with so much darkness and uncertainty, so much hate and ignorance abounding, so much darkness all around us. I don't know about you, but I, I need a little Christmas now. And so I say, haul out the holly. Put up the tree before my spirit falls again. Fill up the stocking. I may be rushing things, but deck the halls again now. Because we all need a little Christmas. We need hope. We need the light and love that comes with all of this. Next week, we'll be launching into the season of Advent and we'll be celebrating the birth of Jesus. As far as we're concerned, one of the most important, if not the, the, the most important event in human history. Something so big and so wonderful that 2,000 years later, we're still unpacking it. That thousands of years after the event, we're still marveling at it and still in wonder and awe about it. So maybe uh, you've been a stickler about Christmas stuff, and maybe you aren't a big fan of Christmas, and you're one of those, it's a pagan thing, and you uh, get on your high horse about the trees and everything. Maybe this year, relax a little bit. Even if you're not going to do it, just let it alone. Maybe you're one of those that are on the other side, and you've been desperately waiting to get all your Christmas stuff out and put it up and start the Christmas music and baking the Christmas cookies and whatever else it is that you do, start now. Don't wait. The rules are out the window for this. Go ahead and go ahead and start Christmas now. And maybe you haven't actually experienced Advent before or Christmas with Christ in the center of it before. Perhaps maybe you don't know who Christ is or you kind of vaguely know about Jesus, but don't really know Jesus. If that's the case, please reach out to us. And throughout the season, please check in with us and tune in with us so that we can tell you more and more about the birth of this amazing person, this God-man, Jesus, who saved humanity. And I invite you all to enter into the season of Advent with us. Father in heaven, Lord, uh, thank you. Thank you for everything you've done. Thank you for everything you are. Thank you for this incarnation, this wondrous, beautiful event that we still talk about today. And thank you for Jesus. Thank you so much for your love and your grace and your mercy. Be with us now and forevermore. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I pray.